just on that first false start, how, what is it like to basically end a game on that kind of play, those plays? Well, it wasn't any frustration uh, towards Boss or, or any of the offensive line. Just the, the circumstance of, of you know what happened. Obviously, I, I should not have shown that. Um, just such such a heat of the moment type situation with the crowd and everything. So, um, I mean, credit credit to the fans at Arizona State for making it a, a hostile environment, especially on that that last drive. Can you walk us through that last drive? So, you, I think you guys kind of get it going a little bit on first down, and then you got sacked on second down, no, and it was or nine yard to Coda. Yeah. Or well, what do you remember about that last drive in general? What he said. <laughs> Two completions, I think, in a row, and then um, just I was trying to get out of the pocket. It was almost a fumble. I got the ball back. Um, some penalties and came up short. How frustrating is that to to be in position, start a drive, and then just kind of have it fall, fall apart a little bit? Yeah, it's very frustrating. Yeah. You talked a little bit about Caleb today. It looked like he took advantage of his mismatch over the middle of the field. Yeah, that that kid. Uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to play with a lot of good teammates, a lot of great teammates and weapons. Um, Jake Butt comes to mind as I think he was a, a Mackey Award as the tight end award. Uh, he was the best tight end in the country um, for probably three years straight. Um, and and Caleb does so many things that remind me of Jake Butt. Um, you know, he's not he's not a freak. He's not you know gifted more than anyone else out on the field like a lot of times uh, guys are. He's just shifty and he's sneaky and, and he understands the game of football. And, and you can tell when he runs his routes, <clears throat> even when he's in his blocking uh, techniques, the game is just slow to him. It, it's, it's, uh, uh, it, it's not too much for him to handle. And, and you know that, that was awesome today because he and I are kind of on the same wavelength. We, we worked together a lot this off season and um, you know, I think he's got um, everyone's respect on the team uh, to the utmost, and it's just fun to play with a guy like that. Was well, there some parts of the game plan that saw some softness, like inside on their zone, where you could find some spots? Well, um, with Herm, Herm Edwards being their head coach, and if you look at his background, um, he was in Tampa Bay when, when Monty Kiffin was the defensive coordinator and, and um, kind of invented that. Uh, Tampa 2 and so you know you, you you saw it on film and you saw a lot of the same tendencies a lot of Tampa 2 and, and you know if you look at the X's and O's and the spacing of the field in Tampa 2 kind of in the middles where where you attack it and um, you know this week I watched because uh, Lovey Smith was there as well I, I watched um, the Super Bowl between the Colts and the Bears and uh, the Bears you know made Peyton Manning check the ball down or throw something underneath if you know, Peyton was going to beat him, and that's what he did a lot of. And I kind of had that same mindset going into today's matchup. Well, you guys had a lot of good, uh, efficient drives, but then you had the one that was stopped on the fourth down, and then the, and then the tip pass. How much did that just momentum changers after having a nice drive end in that fashion twice? Fourth and one's obviously tough, and and, and you know that's going to give them a lot of momentum. Um, you know, as well as the the tipped interception, we, we had the look we wanted and. Um, I think it went off um, their defensive end's hands. And then the corner just made an incredible catch, caught it with his fingertips off his own shoelace. So, um, but the, the good thing that we can build off of is I think the next drive we came back and we scored a touchdown after that interception, uh, moved the ball down the field with ease through the air on the ground. And, um, you know, that's a positive that you take away from, you know, a couple mistakes here and there that, that myself and a couple other guys on offense made. So. Is there some feeling that maybe if you hadn't been hurt in that first game, like where the season could be and where the offense could be? Yeah, you know, I, I don't like to think about what ifs. Um, you know, that that's not the type of life I like to live. Um, it's not enjoyable, uh, the what if life. But um, you know, I, I do I do think that um, with this team and the talent that we have and stuff, a lot of games could have gone differently. Um, and you know, you, you kind of kick yourself for that, but at the same time, um, we know we have a big week this week versus the Crosstown rival. I'm very excited to, to get my first taste of that. You know, I, I had a lot of you know, great rivalries at Michigan, specifically the Ohio State rivalry, and um, I'm excited to experience this one too. Thank you. Thanks.